of course, he did this uh, interception in 33, but he had gone to Illinois for one year. Uh, the coach out there, his name was Zupke, and, he re- and there was a faculty member in Illinois named Green who was from Liverpool, and right. he was pulling Ed Sanford, another member of that uh, uh, team at Liverpool High School. Uh, he went to Illinois. Well, uh, that was our one year, and then he transferred to Ohio State. But uh, it was very, very somber, and ironically, uh, when he was killed, his funeral service was held by the Martin Funeral Home, right. which we're now sitting probably in the room where, where friends were received for the great Bill Booth. Is that not ironic? So, yeah. <laughs> hey, is it true he transfers from Newell? How they pull that off, I don't know. Well, And they, build, they actually build wooden bleachers because fans were in yes, demand wanting yes, to see him yeah, play and, at Patterson and, Field? And, you know, we talk about Mass and Cam McKinley. Listen, we recruited more kids from Liverpool. Now listen, the coach from Liverpool, coach of Liverpool is Leland Shackran. Yeah. And he brought the Carsis brothers down from Manaka. Drove, he was coaching, still living up there. One of them played at Carnegie Tech. But, uh, and then we had uh, Ledger Davis in 1952 that came from Midland. Uh, we have a kid named Bob Bible came from Brooklyn. I mean, we, we, we've got a lot of uh, But the thing, as I looked at that today, and I'm going to let you finish, we're probably going to have to do two videos here to get to the, the most I'll, memorable games. Um, but did they, uh, now I kind of lost my train of thought, but, but is it true in the 50s, it was, that had to be the best decade of the part of football. I mean, well, it was incredible. They, they undefeated seasons, most points. Uh, we had, for some reason, we have had great teams in the center of the decades. 35. 45 was undefeated, two ties. 55 was undefeated. 65 was all the Bob McNay era. They were the, and then in the mid-70s, we had the Bobby Third teams, coached by Bob, Don Charlton. So we've had great teams right in the middle of the decades. And that's, that went for a while. But, the, of course, 55 tied uh, two. Uh, 50 or 45, 55 never lost a game, and then all those teams in the middle of the 60s were really good. And Darren Charlton came from Freedom, where he had a quarterback by the name of J.D. Haglin in the WPIL championship game in 1970. Okay, go ahead. Okay, we're going to move along here to uh, Mark Douglas. Uh, I see Mark quite often. Uh, Great athlete. A 102 yard fumble return for a TD against Salem October 30th, 81. That, that probably will never be. In my first, first season here, I think. And, and well, it was eighty one. Yeah. And and, 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 and uh, another great play almost occurred Friday night. Michael Loy broke from the line of scrimmage at the five. Our longest run from scrimmage has been Eddie Oliver had a ninety three and Robert Jackson had a ninety three up at freezing Mullenkoff Stadium in in uh, Warren. Yeah. And and Michael broke. The other night from the five, and of course the way Bob Prince used to say when somebody could throw it out second, he had Larson in his heart but lead in his feet. And, but he got run down from he got Larson run down. Larson in his heart, lead in his feet. That's a who Bob wrote that? Lou Bob Holtz. Prince. That's pretty. Good. But he got but he got run down, caught from behind, and then there was a, Jimmy will remember there was a um, block in the back, so he was that close to breaking the the I, record. I asked Michael about that fumble. He goes. He was so sweaty, he says, it slipped out of my arm. <laughs> oh, but he, if he'd have gone 95, it would have been the longest line. Right, with, from Nothing Kirby. like Friday night at Patterson. So, what else you got? All right, well, we're here with uh, Robert Jackson's 90-yard pass interception score versus Edison Local, October 10th. Those who remember that game, it really was, that, that's a misleading figure. He really went about 140 yards because he snaked his way back and forth, back and Great forth. Great play. And uh, Johnny Freeman did the same thing uh, that same season. Uh, both of those were game-winning uh, 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 pass interceptions for touchdowns. Uh, I, I thought this number 11 was great when Jason uh, Ludwig and Chris Campbell each recovered fumbles for TDs versus Steubenville October 20, 2000. It was a mud bath game, and we went into the. I think we went into half up about twenty-one nothing because oh. uh, over Steubenville. I was going to say that happened with like fifteen seconds left right before half because I was headed up to the press box. Thought I got to take care of something. I won't miss nothing. I'll miss both fumble yeah, recoveries. You know, they, were, they were they were right. Yeah, they were close together. Of course, we went in the locker room twenty-one nothing, and 
Bobby Thayer couldn't get them settled down because they thought, you know, 21 nothing lead at half over Steubenville, that's unheard of. And number 12. Number 12, I already mentioned, Dave Zex, game-changing uh, tackle of Warfield. Warren Harding, October 16th, 59. That was the game that was supposed to be played at East Liverpool. What uh, happened there? Well, because they had just doubled the size of their stadium, Molokov Stadium, and... Uh, and uh, they said, you'll never be, and they were hot. I mean, that's when the, the days of the uh, All-American Conference with Ken McKinley Alliance, Maslin Niles, uh, Big Red, and uh, th that, was a bi that was a big deal, that conference. They said, you're not going to be able to handle our fans at Liverpool. So they moved the game to Warren Harding. All right, listen, we're going to come back and do uh, the most memorable games because we need the time, and I'm going to give you the time. But I want to salute your industry, the funeral industry, in just a moment, if I can. You talked about Bill Booth. The Martins. Obviously, this was the place that he was laid out after his death. When I was doing the chronological stuff earlier today on YouTube and Facebook, one of the moments that you talked about when the three seniors died, and in 99, when you guys held a funeral up at Potter, Potter's Fieldhouse, and let me just say this. This is what they do in this industry. When all seems lost, they seem to rally the troops, and you and Belinda and her husband Jim and Dyke and that whole organization... I think it truly saved the town from, from one of the most horrific things that has ever happened. So let, let's end on that note, then we'll come back. A sad note, but obviously it's, it's uplifting to know that the Dawson Funeral Home is here in those times of bereavement. Well, um, funeral service is a calling. And uh, Fred Edwards, who was the manager of the phone company, and I was about, I don't know, high school, maybe a little early college, and I didn't know what I wanted to do. And Fred Edwards, who, you know, his daughter Kay was a teacher and administrator in our system, he said, Frank, he said, Funeral service is a calling, and I really believe that. And uh, I, I can't imagine, now that I'm in my 67th year of <laughs> working for the same job, uh, I, I can't imagine doing anything else. Every night I take my little uh, medicinal walk in Manaka along uh, Atlantic Avenue, where I've been bachelor lived for years, and his funeral home was. And I think of your families that were really bound, bound together by that ambulance company in the early days. <laughs> it's, a, it's a unique family, isn't it, the funeral industry? Well, well, and of course, the most dysfunctional uh, organization in the world is a family. So how do you think you can put a family together in a business? But somehow it works in funeral service. Do you remember those three seniors who died? I did the funeral. I know, but I mean, <laughs> a little bit about them and just what that was oh, like. Oh, well, the great story about Salisbury and Aldridge. And, and a young lady died, too. And the, and the, and the Bickerton girl. And, and we just did this. We just had our Potter football. We always have a camp at the out of our farm the, the Saturday, the weekend before two a days. And I was in a tent with Adam Reuter and Nate Jones. And uh, I hear these kids giggling, and they they never go to bed when we have this camp. And so they're giggling. And all of a sudden, a loudest explosion and I ever heard in my life. And Bobby Thayer, they'd thrown him out of his tent, the coach, and somebody else took commandeered his tent. He came running down the towpath. He said, Salisbury. And, and wasn't me, coach. And he, 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 he squealed on the kid that did it. But what they'd done, they'd taken a Coke a pop can and put it in a hot, in the fire. Boom. Oh, my. Well, and Aldridge, the other one that was killed, he had a, and he, he had a brand new tent. And, and Bobby thought, oh, he's probably got the latest uh, LL Bean or you know, oh, about to pay for the tent because flames were going down through the tent. And he said, where'd you get that tent? He said, I got it at Kiddings today for fifteen ninety five. Mm. So, it's a hot deal, I guess. Uh, anyway, ladies and gentlemen, blue and white forever. We're coming back with Digger Dawson, most memorable games in just moments. Stay with us.